some very compelling arguments. It's it's hard to argue from a substantive standpoint that he did not engage in insurrection. Remember, the standard under Section 3 is not that he be charged with insurrection because no one's been charged with that. It's whether he engaged in it, whether he gave comfort or aid to the insurrection. And all the judges and justices, as you correctly pointed out, said he did. Even the judge at the trial court level, the district court judge in Colorado who ruled for Trump, found that he engaged in insurrection. But when it comes to the U.S. Supreme Court, I do think they're going to overturn this ruling. They want to. Uh, the six of three conservative majority does not want to bar Trump from the ballot. And I think they're going to focus on procedure, perhaps say that uh, due process was violated, that there needs to be some sort of mechanism set up by Congress who is empowered under Section 5 to do so, to make sure that each state doesn't go its own way, where individual secretaries of state don't go rogue and target their political enemies. And so I think they're going to punt on the substantive issues. They're not going to touch insurrection, but instead they're going to find a procedural way out of this. I agree. I would fall off my chair if the Supreme Court affirmed the Colorado Supreme Court. So now Trump is going to appeal to the Supreme Court, and I've lost track of how many times he's done that. I take it from your answer that you think that the court is going to take this place. They almost have to take it. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. And, you know, like the uh, the district court gave the Supreme Court a way out if they wanted to say that Section 3 doesn't apply to the president. There's some dispute over that. Although I, I, you know, I don't, I don't agree with it because it would mean that the framers of the Fourteenth Amendment intended to bar traitors and insurrectionists from lower-level government offices, but not the top office. So, like, there are ways that the court wants to get out of this, but I think the best argument for Trump's side would be that his due process rights were violated because the Congress, based on Section Five needs to establish rules they have not done so and if you allow each individual state to do so it would create mass chaos and that was one of the dissents went off on, on that they gave a lot of ammunition i guess to to trump to appeal this decision at the same time that trump will be urging the supreme court to take up this colorado case fast he's asking them to slow down on the federal election interference case and turn down special counsel jack smith's request for them to decide the presidential immunity question right away what do you think they should do here I think that the Supreme Court should expedite the matter. They know how serious this is, and they know that Trump's legal strategy has always been to delay matters. And this case was always going to get to the Supreme Court anyway, so why not get involved now? And so I think they will. Uh, but Trump doesn't – I mean, like, he, he uh, reveals his code. He, re he reveals in his pleadings by saying, hey, uh, don't expedite this. Uh, in fact, even on the gag order, uh, he wanted that slowed down. He just wants to push this past the 2024 election so that he could become president again and order his attorney general to drop everything. But Jack Smith's on to him. Jack Smith is a step ahead. Even when it comes to the case in front of Judge Chutkin in Washington, D.C., Jack Smith wants to provide Trump with discovery, the uh, evidence and uh, materials they have to move the case along, even while that case is stayed, which is paused, pending the Supreme Court's review. And Trump saying, no, I don't want this information. I don't want this evidence. I want this to be as slow of a process as possible. So, yeah, we all know what this is about, and so does the Supreme Court. Yeah, we do. I mean, delay, delay, delay. And right now, you said... As you mentioned, it's on pause. The judge has put it on pause. But she says she hasn't given up the dates yet. She still has those dates. But does it look less and less like the March 5th date is doable? It's unlikely I think it goes in the first week of March. I think, though, uh, if it does get postponed, and I think it will, it, it won't get postponed too much. I think maybe a month, six weeks. And it could push up against the May trial in uh, the Southern District of Florida in front of Judge Cannon. But you know what? That trial ain't <laughs> going before the election. <laughs> so I I think the only criminal trial that I really believe will go to trial before the election against Trump will be the Washington, D.C. case, because that case was built for speed. The other possibility is the New York trial, which is the weakest of the four, the one involving the Stormy Daniels hush money payments. That could also go to trial before the election. But I don't think there's a chance that the other two, the one in Fulton County and the one in front of Judge Cannon in the Southern District of Florida, go anytime soon.